let's get into some more Marvel. There was a Marvel thing that finished this week. Let's talk Loki, shall we? <laughs> okay, this will be the music, I guess. Loki has been fun. I did not have high hopes for it for a start, mostly because I was kind of getting burnt out on the MCU TV shows, you know? It, um, WandaVision, super hyped up for. I loved that connected to the X-Men movies. I was like, this is great. And then nothing happened. And I'm like, wow, what a disappointment. Then I started getting into Falcon and the Winter Soldier and it just kind of dragged. The episodes were, you know, an hour long, essentially. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. I don't have an hour to eat dinner. You know, it takes me an hour to cook dinner. So I skipped it. And then Loki showed up and I just luckily had more time for it. But at the same time, it still got long, long episodes, but I stuck around to watch it anyway. And I'll tell you what, I did enjoy. The concept, pretty cool. Playing around with the timeline, seeing more Tom Hiddleston when his character's technically dead, fine by me. Although I don't think it ever stood out as like the most amazing thing. It was still like TV quality. I enjoyed watching it, but I wasn't hooked every single time. It got more interesting as it went on. I really did like the reveal in the first episode of like, or, or the second episode, I think it was the first episode of seeing, you know, his own future. Seeing how it would link with everything uh, was quite interesting. I saw how the trailers lied here in that the background with him and Sylvie looking at the big explosion. They faked that in the trailer. I should have spotted it, but there you go. Um, but uh, yeah, it got more and more interesting. And then unfortunately, like the most impressive episode was the second last one. I wasn't into mostly because I was feeling very ill and grumbly. Um, you might have heard about it before, but I was just in a, in a bit of a state. So I was watching it while on my phone. So the highlight of the thing I kind of missed because I was too busy scrolling through when, you know, they're in the end of time and voids and big scary cloud. Um, loved seeing the other variants. Didn't think they'd go there. Really, really cool. Um, I also though didn't have hype for Kang the Conqueror as everyone was alluding to because Mephisto never came true and whatever was going on with Falcon and the Winter Soldier never came about either. So I wasn't that into it. But then again, as this final episode came out, I was back on the hype. I felt much better. You know, it was cool to see Crokey. Yeah, I loved I loved Crokey, you know. They were good, fun things to see. And um, obviously in this final episode, they did reveal it was in fact Kang the Conqueror at the end of time. Beyond the void and all that. Um, but he was like in a, he was a docile version of himself that had conquered every other Kang the Conqueror to create the sacred timeline to avoid mul uh, multiverse war along with all the other versions of himself, Kang the Conqueror. Fair enough. But that final episode, as hype inducing as it was, that it was in fact Kang the Conqueror, didn't appeal to me in its own... Is it not Kang? Oh. Either way, the last episode is 80% exposition and talking. And that... <laughs> after, not, after not having as much of a hype from the moment before it, I didn't get that into... I was, what, I was listening, of course. I was into it as much as I could be this morning. But they didn't do... Like, it was just... It wasn't a big finale. The big finale was that he does, in fact, get killed... And it's the split between Loki and Sylvie. And then they open into the multiverse, which is cool. I didn't think they would go there. I didn't, after the X-Men, you know, fake out, I didn't think they were actually going to go into proper opening the multiverse. Now, in concept, looking at the bigger picture, exciting. I like where it's going. I like to see what this Loki does. Yada, yada, yada. The Infinity Stones are worthless here. All cool. Um, but the actual execution... I missed out on, you know? This was the best episode, and I, I missed it. I didn't, I didn't, I was a little bit flippity dippity. So I don't have as fond memories of it, and I'm not going to re watch it, I imagine, like everything else I would. Um, but the fact that it's actually expanding more, it's leading into Multiverse of Madness, very cool. The fact it's leading into Quantum Mania, very cool. The fact that it's potentially leading into Spider Man, very, very cool. I appreciate all of that, you know? Um, although technically the new branches have just started. So the old branches, are they just being pushed forward in time? I guess so, yeah, because the time, they'd be the same age. Or I guess it would, no, it'd be an old, like an older Andrew Garfield and the other one, right? Tobey Maguire? I don't know. Either way, very enjoyable show. 
probably better than WandaVision, actually, yeah. But, like, the hypeness of it wasn't as big because the action scenes were all in the previous episode. Um, but, hey, now they're also leading into Kang the Conqueror. Very, very cool. Um, and then the fact that people... I had low hopes for it, so it was better than I expected. But it was also that final episode came with a bit of a flat fuse to me. And the episode before it, that was good, I kind of missed out on, you know. But that's my thoughts. But they don't say the name Kang. Yeah, the Dozo guy has a different name and it's not referred to as Kang. That's probably just a type for one of these variants. Yeah, that was actually another thing that com confused me. Everyone was excited, you know, it's Kang. So it is Kang the Conqueror, right? But because they never say it, I also didn't know who he was for the longest time. I was like, is he? Is he not? Because I assumed he wasn't because everything they've led up to hasn't been made in the previous shows, you know? Leading up to X-Men or Mephisto? No. It didn't happen. So I was like, this isn't Kang the Conqueror. But then they never really did anything. So it was really, Kang is the name for a variant. What? So Kang... Why have they... Can you not make a show clear in its ending, please? I don't need to be... I don't want to be a theorist to understand what's going on. It's supposed to be that every audience could watch this and be like, I get it. Why did they not... You know what I mean? They fubbed the ending. They fubbed it. Completely fubbed it up. But the concept, the op the bigger picture, the opening of the multiverse, I like. The execution of the middle story with the connection between Loki and Sylvie, I like. The reveal and visuals of the other variants of Loki and Mobius' whole interactions, I like. The ending and the execution of that specifically, no. You know? I liked it a lot. It was a very cool episode. The final episode? Cool to read on Wikipedia. Not cool to watch. Because it was just talk, talk, talk from two different scenes. A brief fight between the two Lokis. And then a death and it moves on. And it's like, oh my god. And then that's it. You know what I mean? There you go. Look at that. That's a fake light. Look at this. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? It is fake. This is fake. Something here. Something here is fake. Ba ba bam. That's not what it looks like. It's not a dip with a bunch of small meteors. It's the entire planet exploding. But anyway, there you go. Not only cool to watch. Uh, not that cool to watch. Only a bit of talk's quite boring. That's my take, essentially. Yes. Um. So Loki, overall, I did enjoy, but I won't rewatch it because, in hindsight, the bigger picture's cool, but the execution, kind of naff for what it was leading up to. Um. But there you are. That is officially my thoughts on Loki. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. There you go.